will you pray with me and for me, please? Eternal One, speak through me in spite of me. May your wisdom shine through. May your grace be evident. May your wisdom rise above human voices. And so may it be. Well, as much of a West Wing fan or fanatic as I am, I didn't show that clip to discuss the dangers of leaking or to show you what a great actor Richard Schiff is. He plays Toby. Um, or to even to give you a glance at a much younger Rob Lowe. Wasn't he young in that clip? Holy cow. Um, the specifics of the scene are not so much what uh, are the point of, of what I wanted you to see there. Uh, I wanted to look at what Toby is doing here. Toby said, for those of you who are not familiar with the West Wing, there may be one or two of you out there who are not aware that I am a West Wing fan and that uh, that was a, indeed a clip from the West Wing. Uh, Toby's the one with, with the beard, who's the, the main, main speaker there. Uh, so someone has messed up, and actually maybe a couple of people. Uh, Toby's comment was about the, the president winning the re-election on someone else's coattails, on the vice president's coattails, was possibly not, whoops, sorry about that, that's an emergency warning, but there is a flood warning. Um, Toby's comment was perhaps not the most diplomatic comment he could have made uh, about a sitting president, um, his boss, <clears throat> um, and his friend. And, and so that was one mistake, maybe. But then definitely someone leaked that comment, which was a hu huge mistake, a comment made in a private meeting uh, to the press. So they both made mistakes. So how does Toby handle that situation? That's what I wanted to look at. And as he says, he doesn't try to find out who told the press a lie. He doesn't have a witch hunt, right? He doesn't scream at them or scold. He doesn't read them the riot act or threaten them with potential firings. He simply reminds them that they work together, that they are a team that he works for and with them. And notice how that's reinforced at the end, at the end of the scene. He and Sam are walking out, and Sam teases him by saying, oh, you must be feeling good because you won in football. But he, then he says, he asks Sam what he can do for Sam. What can I do for you today? Sam is his deputy, right? What can I do for you today? Toby's the chief of communications for the entire White House. Sam is the deputy chief. And he asks Sam, what can I do for you? Now, Toby isn't my favorite character in the series um, for many reasons. Um, I'm actually, I think, most like Sam Seaborn, the, the Rob Lowe character. I think he's a writer. He's very obsessive about writing and rewriting and polishing. He's a wordsmith. Uh, I like my favorite characters are probably um, C.J. Craig, the press secretary, and Charlie Young, who's President Bartlett's um, body man, played by Dulé Hill, um, his personal aide, um, and Josh Lyman, who's the deputy uh, chief, chief of staff. Um, but in this scene, Toby demonstrates some of the best qualities of a good leader that we were just talking about with Colin. What does the reading from Samuel say? One of the things an excellent ruler does, actually, is to have a covenant, a covenant with God in, in the, in the uh, reading from Samuel. Now, covenant is an old-fashioned word. It's not one that we hear very often, unless you're talking about this church. Um, it means a promise. But it's a two-way promise. It's not one-sided. It's not, I promise to do this. It is a, it's like a treaty. It goes two ways. It goes both ways. It's like a contract. I promise something and the other part person promises something, right? I promise to pay someone $100 and they promise to shovel my sidewalk over. <laughs> now, wouldn't that be a good deal? Um, 
I give something and they give something. We've both promised. I'm not just giving them money. I'm not just handing them some money. And they're not just shoveling the sidewalk out of the goodness of their heart. A covenant involves commitment on both sides. And that's why it's often called a marriage covenant. A relationship covenant. Not simply a promise. Everyone involved is promising something, sometimes many somethings. To love, honor, cherish, to love in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, and so on, in the traditional marriage vows, right? And the same is true of leadership. Although the covenant is often not formally spoken out in full or spoken of as a covenant, political leaders are usually sworn in or inaugurated. Um, pastors are install, installed. Some of you will remember when I was installed. And CEOs of large corporations may have formal welcomes. They may not have a, a ceremony, a, a specific ceremony or, or swearing in ceremony because that's not how corporations work. But there's some kind of recognition of them as the new executives. And in all of these ceremonies, the new leaders may give speeches recognizing or offering that their, their ideas on the direction uh, that the organization might or might not, might or should, sorry, might or should take. And sometimes, either in the ceremony or in that speech, there's some form of covenant of, of those promises made. For politicians, it's in the oath of office. Even if uh, even city officials and county clerks take an oath of office, right? Everybody takes some form of oath of office, and there's a covenant in that oath. Those oaths talk about what is expected of them and what they will do, and usually at least a little bit about what it is they'll receive in return, or the person who's administering the oath, whether it's the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, <coughs> or, the, or the city manager, or the mayor, or whoever, mentions it. They will say something like, Jane Smith, you have been duly elected to this office by the people of Pretty City, who have found you to be the most eligible person based on your qualification merits, etc., etc. And that's what's expected of Jane Smith, that she exercise those qualifications and merits, that she uphold, you know, the expectations of those who elected her, that she was elected, and so her, her position is based on the confidence of those who elected her. And when she takes her oath of office, that oath mentions what she will do. She'll enforce the bylaws of the city or the constitution of the state or whatever her position requires. Together, Jane Smith and the people of Pretty City, or at least that's the theory, right? That's the theory, that's the hope. When I was installed here at Holy Covenant, those of you who were here will remember that there were mutual promises of support and encouragement, how we would work together for the good of Holy Covenant, MCC. Mutual support for the common good of the church. Give and take, working together, a two-way street. And that's what Toby was saying, too. You're my guys, he said. A team. That's a covenant. A good ruler who involves God in their life understands a covenant with God isn't about appeasing an angry deity but about mutual caring. It's a two-way street. Love of others shows our love of God because we see God in others. That mutual care demonstrates our love for God. A ruler who cares for the people shows their love for God. It's a covenant of love, of care for God's people who are, in fact, God present for us, right? You're my guys. 
ruling is not, as some seem to think, and I certainly, you know, as small, many small children seem to think, about being in charge. You know, you hear people say, if I were ruler of the world, X, it's not about having authority to do whatever you want. You know, I'd have ice cream every day. Yeah. It's about making sure that everyone, not just you and your friends, have enough. It's about making sure that people are healthy, that children get an education, that people have a decent income, that people can be who they are meant to be without bullying or abuse. That discrimination ceases. I think it is short-sighted to ensure enormous wealth and power for those immediately around you without interest in the long-term effects. When people have better health, physical and mental, they can work more productively. I mean, I think this is, is it's very, very short-sighted. When they have better educational opportunities, they can do the same and can innovate. When they have employment that matches their skill level and pays a living wage, they will work. Businesses benefit families, healthcare costs would go down. Taking the long-term view actually costs less. Preventive medicine is everyone's friend, and preventive medicine is not just a metaphor. So it's a common cliche that anyone who wants to rule should never be allowed to do so. Maybe not quite true. There are a few people who have good ideas. Maybe they should just be given input to rulers. I don't know. Politics is a difficult dilemma. I think it's worth remembering, though, that when Solomon became ruler over Israel and God offered Solomon anything he wanted, in order to rule. Solomon chose wisdom above riches or land or power or military strength. Solomon wanted to rule well. He said, this is a vast and contentious land, Holy One. Give me wisdom. He chose wisdom. Today is the day known in the church calendar as rule of Christ or reign of Christ or most commonly as Christ the King, which we avoid that kind of um, non-inclusive language. It's actually a relatively new observance, um, less than 100 years old or just about 100 years old. Um, it marks the end of the Christian year and theologically it's supposed to be the climax of the year Christ enthroned as the ruler of the universe, right? The end of all things. We're supposed to be reading Revelation today, right? Yeah, thus the reading for the, today describing the ideal ruler and reflecting on Christ as ruler. Well, I'm not much on Jesus as boss. From what we read in the Bible, while he taught the disciples to do this or don't do that, he wasn't particularly caught up on rules and regulations, was he? Uh, especially if those rules and regulations made life difficult for people. I have a sense that he would lead more by consensus than by diktat. The disciples were his guides, even if, like Toby's team, they sometimes let him down. Witness Peter denying him. Judas betraying him, John running away in the garden of Gethsemane. But they were still his guides, weren't they? Most of us aren't rulers or even leaders. Maybe we facilitate a discussion group or lead a small team or work or at work or supervise a couple of people or maybe we're parents or sometimes lead a couple of volunteers in a project. But even when it's just us or one or two others, we can use Toby's principles, can't we? Well, they're really God's principles. The principles of covenant, those mutual promises of care, mutual support. No one is the star. Everyone is the star. You're my guys. How can I help you today? 
In all God's names, amen. amen. One of the things we do.